Denver is the quintessential city of change, moving smoothly from outpost to capital city. The ever-evolving facade shows no sign of slowing down. Join us as Artifications explores the changing face of Denver's art scene. Denver, the Mile High City, is a testament to broad municipal expansion. Whether you're in Aurora or shopping in Cherry Creek, most of these neighborhoods were standalone towns or villages that were annexed into the behemoth that we know today as Denver. While the shifting sands of Denver might be intimidating to some, the art scenes here are thriving. The constant air of change in Denver creates a fervent atmosphere of opportunity where artists can show their works to new audiences. The growing number of art districts in Denver remind visitors that Denver, in many ways, is still truly the Wild West. We'll spend some time examining two of these specific art scenes, the trendy River North Arts District, with its perpetual promise of progress and the polished warren of streets and businesses known as 40 West Arts. Let's check this out. A brave pattern lay westward, like a carpet unrolled. Already, some individuals had seen it as part of a larger inevitability. Notice, wrote Albert Richardson of the New York Tribune, how the Central Plains, Denver, and the new diggings sat along a parallel with Philadelphia, Baltimore, Washington, D.C., Cincinnati, St. Louis, and San Francisco. The main thrust of expansion had always been along this line, and there it would continue to build. Elliot West. Before it came to be known as an art hub, the River North District was Denver's industrial area. Artists came into the area in the 70s and 80s when the economy left many warehouse spaces available. Now these warehouses have been taken up, an economy bought on by a green flood of cash from the cannabis industry, leaving artists with fewer locations to set up and create their works. Now it's a millennial's paradise with numerous trendy open bars, cafes, and restaurants, but less galleries. You'll recognize that you're in the Rhino Arts District when you see a number of orange rhinoceroses inhabiting windows and doors. While this did mean something a number of years ago, like I said, times are changing. But I want to find out where exactly Rhino stands in 2020. For more information on Denver, please check out our first podcast at artifications.us. Our first stop, the foolproof art space. Over the last 10 years, Rhino has become synonymous with emerging arts. Laura herself arrived as a contemporary artist in 2005 and watched how the River North's Art District has gone from dismal to desirable. Most galleries that were here have moved to other parts of the city in search of lower rents. It's under these circumstances we begin our conversation to talk about the changing landscape in the River North Arts District. It has really been quite a roller coaster here where the gallery is now. In 2005, there really was nothing here. This section of Upper Larimer in the River North Art District was just completely a warehouse district. Most of the people that have bought residences in the area, which I guess might be considered gentrifying, are from New York. Um, they feel like this area feels a little bit like Brooklyn, Brooklyn so they're very comfortable here. I think for artists, that's been challenging. Spaces are no longer available. The, a space that was $1,000 is now $4,000 a month. Um, the taxes on that space are now $1,500 a month. So, you know, we're looking at a shift that's, <laughs> that's in a price range that most artists and creative people can't afford. So I think, you know, my only criticism for the Rhino Art District would be, in fact, that it is, uh, 
not quite organized in terms of saving history. You know, when thinking about supporting developers, it comes a little bit more from the city side and a little bit less from what it's going to look like historically 20 years from now or 30 years from now. During our explorations, we come upon the Dateline Gallery. The Dateline Gallery is an experimental gallery. Experimental because it is based out of the home of Jeremy Dorrance. And personally, I love that. When I was coming up, I did the exact same thing. We stopped to speak with Jeremy Dorrance about what motivated him to start the gallery here and its role in the current contemporary art market of Rhino. Instead of having a living room, I have white walls. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess more we do more like artist support, you know. But yeah, so for example, uh, this this artist here is mostly a mural artist, and this is his very first uh, gallery exhibition. Um, yeah, so I at the time when I moved in here back in 2013, I was really excited with the direction that the neighborhood was going. Uh, there were a lot of art galleries, a lot of art studios. I would like to just see more galleries come back here. It seems like every month, the last three years, one gallery has been closing one after another. We're kind of the only ones left here in terms of art galleries. Visions West has been in business for over 20 years and was started in all places, Livingston, Montana. And Visions West Gallery, as a contemporary art gallery, has been navigating these seas for over three years now. Visions West in general, just to give you a little background, we've been in business for 20 years, starting in kind of an obscure location, um, Livingston, Montana of all places to have contemporary art. We're one of the first contemporary art galleries in the neighborhood. Um, however, this neighborhood does have a long history of arts and artist studios far before we moved to this neighborhood, far before it became Rhino. And I, as given that I'm not the owner of the gallery, I, I first started working at our space in Rhino. I helped kind of open this location. Um, we were on Wazee Street um, in more downtown Denver, and the space really wasn't um, ideal for showing work, and our lease was coming up, and two and a half years ago, Rhino was not necessarily new, but still up and coming as it is now. Um, yes, the buildings are fill filling up fast up here, the rents are going up, but we feel confident that this is our home. Um, at least for as long as possible. If you ride Colfax approximately six miles west, you will come upon the highly adorned and highly creative 40 West Arts District. We met with Liz Black the executive director of the 40 West Arts District at the 40 West Arts Gallery and Theater. The history of 40 West is tied directly to Colfax Avenue. As Colfax is one of Colorado's most famous streets, it has a hundred plus year history, much of it preceding the time it was even paved. Recently, 40 West has welcomed over 10 galleries to the district, and that's just the beginning. One of the newest and largest, most visible features of 40 West Arts District is the 40 West Art Lines. And that was to build a four mile outdoor, walkable, bikeable, free gallery for anyone in the surrounding community and beyond to enjoy. Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design is a private arts and cultural college that's located right in the heart of 40 West Arts District. And it's a vibrant arts college that we at 40 West Arts love to partner with regularly. So there are really three arms of the movement in arts and culture that are happening here along Lakewood West Colfax. And that is 40 West 
Arts District, the art and cultural arm of the community efforts. There's the Lakewood West Colfax Business Improvement District. That's the business arm of the effort. And then the final arm of the efforts that we're engaged in is the West Colfax Community Association. And that's where you really see local citizens, our neighborhood associations, smaller nonprofits, and other groups that really come together to revitalize and grow and support this community through arts, economy, and culture. It's exciting to hear people talk about the arts in an invigorating, passionate voice. Keep it up. Liz Black was courteous enough to set me up with one great interview. Here we meet artist Carrie McKenna. Carrie is a local Denver artist who's been looking for the right space for her studio for a while. I am a Denver native. So um, I actually grew up here, and even though we're in the city of Lakewood, this is Denver Metro. So I do consider myself a Denver artist and part of the Denver art scene. The different thing about 40 West specifically is that it is actually partly developed and funded by the city of Lakewood, uh, which really I haven't seen in any other arts district around the area that the city is actually interested in making it happen and making sure it exists and helping to fund it. Yeah, the main um, event is First Fridays. Um, that's been an ongoing product of Denver, the Denver art scene for 30 years. Um, so everywhere you go on First Friday is open to the public. Some of the other galleries have different opening nights to bring people into the area. The common theme in Denver seems to be one of change. There's no shortage of your talent in this fantastic city. It has an abundance of places for people to show. Denver is still growing. It's still undergoing change. And all the artists there are currently writing future stories of what its history is gonna be like. Will it be a place of non-stop gentrification where artists are continually shuffled from place to place in search of lower rents? Or, Will Denver artists take up the mantle of formulating their own history by getting involved in local organizations and structuring out what the future will look like? The future rests in the hands of the artists who participate in the administration of local municipalities when it comes to leaving space for the arts and artists. Denver is in a constant state of change. What that means is Denver is still having its story written. Thank you so much for watching this documentary. I'm Roland Ramos. If you like what you've seen and you want to see other examples of what we do here at Artifications, please visit us at the website below and check out all of our social media links. Our goal here is simple, to make the art world just a little smaller because you can't spell earth without art. I'd love to hear what you're doing in your scene. In the meantime, stay busy, keep creating, and take care.